Pass me the ball! Hey y'all, and welcome back to my channel! Okay, so today we are going to be doing a, another Will I Buy It video. And I have been informed that the Will I Buy It phenomenon was created by the lovely Samantha Mark. She has a playlist of other people and all whatever. We'll leave her and that link down below so we can give credit where credit is due and support and everything. Now, I feel like I'm going to be doing Will I Buy It somewhat more frequently than just straight up anti-hauls. Because I feel like it's easier to talk about things that you're like, eh, I'm on the fence, you know, rather than like all the things you feel super passionate about not getting, at least for me. Because there's so many things that you just pass by and you're just like, eh. So we are going to be doing that today. Now we're going to be starting off with one from a brand that is very near and dear to my heart. Becca decided they are going to be dropping a new highlighter, potentially new formula. And y'all, y'all know that I am a total, just I, when it comes to Becca highlighters, I lose all control. And this one looks like some beautiful, like pinky peachy goodness. But the one thing I noticed while looking at this thing is that it is going to be exclusive to Becca travel retail locations. What the heck does that mean? Like, I have no idea. Like, I don't even know what a Becca travel retail location is. Is is it like something at the airport? When you're driving around in your car and you're crossing states, is there like a Becca toll where you have the opportunity to like buy makeup? I don't know. So if any of y'all know what that even means, definitely let me know down below. You guys know this is something I would love to have. I am trying to purchase less just to have and more to review, but this may be something kind of along down the road that I pick up because when it comes to Becca highlighters, I am a collector and an avid consumer. Y'all, then we've got Tarte. They have decided to introduce another addition to their Rainforest of the Sea collection. Which is a sort of ongoing theme with Tarte that they just can't let die. Kind of like in the same vein with Too Faced and like the chocolate and just basically smelly and edible stuff. And the peach and things like that. They're like, people like this theme, so we're going to stick with it and we're going to ride it and beat this horse until it is beyond dead. I just haven't been really like impressed with Tarte, like just stuff that they're just, just putting out. I'm wearing the new found, the face tape, face shapey shape foundation. And it looks pretty good on camera, but up close and personal, I look like an 80 year old lady. And I've watched a couple of reviews of this thing. Thing. They're like not a lot of mattes. Some of the mattes are like a little lacking in pigmentation. And then like the, the four shimmery, shiny, cha 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 shades in the middle are apparently terrible to work with. You guys know how I feel about pressed glitters anyway. And so this is definitely one that I'm just like, you know what? I'm good. Y'all can keep your rainforest of the sea. Then something that I had a couple of y'all like actually tag me in and I saw my gal Lacey from Spooky Lips and Fat Hips. I always get that mixed up. But it is that, I don't even know the friggin' name of it, but it is that like ColourPop all green palette. Y'all, this is so pretty. I have never tried any ColourPop eyeshadows, and I'm like really thinking about getting this one. And then that like all pink one, because I love pink and green, and I love them on their own, and I love them together, and they're only like $13 a piece. I'm very much considering getting that. It is so beautiful. It has a great like matte to shimmer ratio thing going on. I've already got some like looks ideas in my mind. That is definitely something that I want to pick up, as well as trying some other things from ColourPop, because ColourPop is a brand that I just... 
I just haven't purchased a lot from. Okay, so there's like this whole, y'all know how I feel about brands slapping really popular things onto their outer packaging and making a thematic collection. Because they're not really selling you the makeup. They're just selling you the hype and the collector and the fandom and the whatever. Well, we've got another Sephora collection. Sephora is becoming one of those brands that just keeps pushing stuff out. But they are doing a Sephora Plus Marvel collection. Which we all know we had the whole Captain Marvel thing going on. We're getting the, the Avengers going on. You know, the hype over this is real. And so Sephora's all like, all right, let's, let's market off of this. But if you look, if you look, I mean, the packaging isn't that whatever anyway. But if you look at like the makeup on a whole, you're like, all right. I mean, I just, I just feel like that this is literally just let's take some makeup and slap a whole like thematic let's put a really popular marketable thing on it and then sell it because not necessarily because the makeup's good or innovative or anything but because it'll sell because of hype i mean this is the same problem i have with storybook cosmetics where like the whole aesthetic of a collection or of an item isn't necessarily the makeup product itself but how it's presented. The Sephora brand isn't cruelty free anyway, so I wouldn't pick it up anyway, but it's just, it just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Then some, something else that rubbed me the wrong way. Natasha Denona decided to release another one of her big, ridiculously overpriced $129 palettes. This is the BBA palette. And I saw this and I was like, Look at them colors. Look at those beautiful, cooly, grungy, awesome, fall, autonomous colors. I looked at it and I was like, yes, this is a shimmer to matte ratio I can get behind. I can review it on my channel. I could be all like, is it worth the money? It's going to be so great. And then I scrolled down to the description and it was all like, first ever Natasha Denona palette with like 50 million different eyeshadow formula finishes. We've got powder, we've got shimmer, we've got metallic, we've got cream. Natasha, 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 you need, you need to stop. You need to stop putting cream products in with your powder. You just, you need to stop. Now, if I understand correctly, one of the cream shades is that black, which people are going to be like, well, you put that under as an intensifying base for something else. But I'm sorry, when I'm using a black, I use it to darken up that outer V bit and I ain't putting no cream in that outer V over top of mat or whatever we got going on. I was so ready. I was so ready to just spelunk the money and then it was like cream contamination. So I don't know if I'm gonna review that on here, Earl. I mean, I'm just gonna have to like hopefully go in store and swatch it and see if it's like one cream shadow. We'll have to see, but I'm just, I just, I just, I was so, I was so ready. And I just really, I really resent. You guys know this has been an ongoing thing with Miss Danula. She just keeps putting creams in with her powders. I'm like, please, just, just separate them, please. Speaking of another, like, cream product, Lime Crime, finally, after being how many years on the market, decided that they are going to release blushes promo the pictures the packaging i saw it and i was like oh that's beautiful because you guys know i love me some blush you guys know i like a lot of lime prime products so i'm like this is a match made in heaven and then i saw that it was like cream to powder formula all right, I don't, I don't, I don't use the creamy cream, but it's a creamed powder. So for right now, I'm going to like cool my jets and I'm going to wait. I know Atlee or whatever her name is, she's real fun. She does a lot of lime crime stuff. I'm going to see if she's going to review them. Because if there's something I can pick up with a brush and distribute like I would a powder one, then maybe that's something I would like to try. But if it is like a true cream... 
I ain't gonna mess with it. Okay, let's 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 just get real for a minute. Part of the reason I haven't purchased from ColourPop is because ColourPop is one of the main offending brands when it comes to releasing so much stuff. I mean, every time you turn around, you blink and they are releasing a new collection. Like they just like, like, like they just had one release that I don't even know the name of and then they're like, "Oh, here's our spring release." I mean, I don't understand how they keep, how they're able to just keep cranking out this stuff. Those blush shades look all kinds of pretty, but as we just discussed, I am not a cream formula person. If they were in a powder, you know I would be eyeballing those because I like me a big, bright, vivid blush that is the wrong color for my skin tone. But they just come out with so much stuff. Stuff. I mean, and, and the problem that I have with this is you guys know how I feel about an oversaturated market that is like hideously oversaturated with a crap ton of limited edition stuff. It's like they just keep putting stuff out there. They're like, oh, here's six more lipstick shades. Here's six more super shock shadow blush highlighter, whatever. Here's another neutrally eyeshadow palette. I remember back in the day when each time ColourPop released a palette, it was like the big thing. People were like, we're losing it. We're losing our minds. And now they're releasing so much stuff, you just, you, you can't even keep up anymore. So this spring collection, I just saw it and I was just like, that came out of nowhere. Then another thing that kind of came out of nowhere is the Nikita Dragon Dragon Beauty. Now, Nikita Dragon is an influencer person that I'm not very familiar with. I know she used to float around with Jeffree Star. Now she's being more with, um, what's his name? Gabriel Zamora and Manny MUA and kind of that crowd going in there. Like I said, I'm not familiar with her. So I, I don't know if she's like, is she known for like, I feel like when you are someone, an influencer, who's releasing their own makeup, whether it be a collaboration or more specifically your own line. I feel like you would need to be very like, like you, your, your preceding personification would have to be one that is very in on the like doing the makeup and the tutorials and doing the stuff. Like if Nikki Tutorials were to come out with her own makeup line, I'd be like, okay, all right, I totally understand that. I don't know if Miss Dragon is, is this? Yeah, like I said, I'm not familiar. No one come and hate me. Just leave it down in the comments. I don't mind being edumacated. So I don't know if she's coming from the standpoint of someone who puts makeup on herself or if she's coming from the standpoint of someone who is kind of like the Kim Kardashian, very, you know, coming from the standpoint of someone who has makeup put on them. But we've got two like fancy little powders, whatever, and some kind of skin correcting fancy fancy serum. I just know I'm good. Now, I have been working on getting dipping my toes into more of the I don't want you know prestige skincare. And you guys know I've tried the Forsali Rose Gold Elixir, and now Forsali has decided we're gonna come out with a rose gold skin mist. Your girl got dry skin. Your girl loves a good mist. But I'm just like... It's $38, which, I mean, I think the elixir is like 48 or 52 I don't know. It's expensive. I know it's expensive. But a part of me really, really wants to check out this bougie spray. And honestly, if it can do wonderful things for my skin, I don't mind paying the price. I am this close. This close to pulling the trigger on some Tatcha skincare, but just, it's not something I'm gonna rush out and buy. It's something that I kind of want to like see some reviews, see whether, you know, it is all it's meant or hyped up to be. Because I feel like Frisali is a brand that does tend to get like super, super, super hyped up, whether their products are like good or not. They just look good in like Instagram videos and people slathering their crap all over the face looking like this. 
Then something else that came out that was like, you know, from a brand that I'm like, I'd really like to try stuff from this brand, but I just haven't yet. The Dose of Colors Disney Mini Mouse Collection thing. They did do a Mickey Mouse collection last year. I think it was like their holiday collection, and that one did absolutely nothing for me, and this one does absolutely nothing for me. I'm a Disney fan to a certain extent, but I'm much more like Disney princess than I am traditional Mickey and Minnie. And then looking at it, you got the eyeshadow palette, and it's like an eyeshadow palette. It's got like six shades in it, and then it's got like some face... What? No, no, it sounds like a headache and a half I don't want to deal with. So that's just something I'm just, it just, it just has absolutely no aesthetic or even like color whatever for me. It's just, it's a complete and total pass. Alright guys, I'm going to be leaving you all with that. Obviously, like always, I love hearing you all's opinions on the stuff I talked about, as well as something you're either going to buy or you're not going to buy. And also, if you have any of these, let me know what your experiences are, whether you recommend them to me or whether you're like, girl, stay clear of this. But thank you guys so much for watching. I love you, and as always, keep it real. Mwah!